Bem-vindos para mais um episódio de Startup para Startup. Eu sou o Alexandre Liuzzi, cofundador da Remessa Online, e nesse episódio nós vamos trazer a perspectiva do investidor. Para isso, convidamos Hernan Casá, cofundador do Mercado Livre e da Kazak Ventures, para contar um pouquinho da sua história. Hernan, muito obrigado por estar aqui hoje. I believe you prefer we talk in English. Uh, so I wanted to first start with uh, asking you about your background. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. No, my, my pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for the invitation. So I'm Hernan Casa, as you can see uh, from my background. I'm from Kasek Ventures. Uh, we are the largest early stage fund in Latin America. Uh, we co-founded Kasek Ventures in 2011, together with uh, Nicolás Sekasi, uh, and have invested since then in, in many great uh, companies. Gemesa Online, of course. But then and on top of that, uh, Nubanki, Madeira Madeira, Quinto Andar, Logi, Jimpa, Creditas, uh, many great uh, companies. Uh, and before that, uh, I was an entrepreneur in 1999, so ages ago. Uh, I co-founded Mercado Libre together with uh, Marcos Galperin. He was the CEO of the company, and I was first the COO of the company, and then uh, the CFO once the company was publicly listed in, in the NASDAQ. Uh, so I've been around the tech ecosystem for more than 20 years. Um, I'm happy to see how much it has evolved. Uh, but it's terrific to see entrepreneurs like yourself that are uh, really, really, really changing the landscape, the business landscape in, in Brazil and in, in Latin America. In our early days, there were just a, a few companies most of us totally unexperienced and now you still see many fresh graduates that go uh, into starting a company and that is great but also many people with, with some relevant experience doing that uh, so today we have a much richer tech ecosystem and in particular in, in brazil where clearly uh, the ecosystem has become very relevant And it is somehow the hub for innovation uh, for the whole region. So uh, yeah. that's really my, my background. So 21 years in a couple of lines. <laughs> Now that, that's, that's amazing. And, and, and uh, in one of your interviews, uh, you've uh, mentioned uh, some great ideas that, uh, you know, started in gar garages in the United States. Um, you know, what we would like to know is what do you look for in startups in this early stage, in the beginning? Well, that, that's a great uh, question. And in general, in our industry, in the venture capital industry, there are like two big kind of lines of thought. One is driven by industries. So uh, investors think about the future, think about emerging technologies, and they try to see where those technologies uh, can really create significant uh, changes in, in, in some industries. And they place their investments based on what they believe the future will look like. Then there, there's another line of thoughts that is ours that relates more to the founders. We believe in investing in extraordinary founders, extraordinary visionaries, and those extraordinary visionaries are the ones that are going to create their own future, are the rainmakers uh, of the story that will make their dreams uh, come true. Obviously, uh, we also look at the industries, and those that look at the industry first uh, do an assessment about the team. But what we do is we focus on the entrepreneurs. So that's for us the most important aspect in making an investment. 
And what we look for is obviously a strong vision. We also look for an extraordinary, almost irrational commitment to developing that uh, mission, that vision. That is uh, something that is, is very important. Uh, so, so that commitment, that, that uh, ir irrational uh, kind of feeling to make things happen is, is what really clicks. And then very, very importantly, it's uh, leadership, storytelling. Uh, what, what you need as an entrepreneur is not only to have a, a great vision and a life commitment to it, but also you need to have the ability to convince others to join your vision uh, because nobody can do it uh, alone. So you need uh, other uh, co-founders, other executives, other employees to join your company. And those people need to be probably as committed as you are with that vision. And you can really convey that by selling your, your vision. Then you also need, obviously, investors to join your vision. So, so you need to be able to tell that story in a way that for us is, is compelling to go and invest. It's one of those things that I don't want to miss. So, so it's very important. Uh, and on top of that, obviously, you need to bring on board suppliers, uh, customers. So that opportunity, that, that ability to, to bring people on board, to make them believe in what you believe is uh, fundamental. So those are the, the main characteristics. Then probably because of our background, but because we're also big believers in the impact that technology can have in the world, you need to be tech focused. So companies that can really focus on building world-class products are the ones that eventually create sustainable modes and are the ones that eventually end up uh, succeeding. So uh, in a nutshell, for us, the most important thing is the entrepreneur. And for the entrepreneur to be successful, we think they need to have a strong vision, a life commitment to that vision, significant leadership, capacity to, to really tell their story in a very compelling way, and be tech focused. Usually, we see a lot of people talking about the reasons why startups succeed. And I believe you mentioned some of the reasons in your previous answer. What we would like to hear is the reasons why startups fail, in your opinion. But, but why companies fail? Mainly because of uh, bad luck. So maybe a few things that they imagined uh, did not happen. Uh, maybe they ended up betting on a technology that was not the right one and a different technology appears a few months later and, and then you're late in the game to to change from one technology to, to the other. I think it's Jim Collins that says, um, good luck can help you, bad luck can kill you. And that is what happens in this industry. So obviously you need those extraordinary entrepreneurs that I was mentioning earlier, but, but those extraordinary entrepreneurs with bad luck <laughs> will not uh, succeed even though they try. So, so luck is one important thing, but then uh, setting that aside, what uh, may, may make a company fail is the lack of those things that I mentioned that the successful entrepreneurs need to have. Lack of commitment, lack of a clear vision, lack of being product focused, lack of being able to bring on board the right uh, team. Uh, so, so obviously what makes a, a successful entrepreneur is, is not something automatic. And if you have a check, check, check on those, you'll succeed. But you have a much higher chances of, of succeeding versus someone that does not have that. And if you lack that, I would say that probably uh, that entrepreneur will, will not succeed because those are fundamental things that need to be to be present. And, and sometimes also what happens is that uh, there's a competitor that moves faster, does it better, for some reason gets more uh, funding and ends up uh, uh, being able to succeed while their company fails. So, so there are many things. The, the only one that for us is really painful is to see a company fail because the team uh, did not have the right commitment. All other things are part of the business and we are always very respectful of all entrepreneurs that are committed, but they need to be committed. It's very important. 
Um, and in the, uh, we've, uh, there is a research that shows that about 70% of the investments now in Brazil come from international investors. Uh, why do you think there are more international investors and uh, the reason why startups have uh, to be kind of global in order to receive those funds? Yeah, so uh, two things are happening. One is that Brazil is today in everyone's radar. So all investors that look for opportunities globally have Brazil uh, in the radar screen. Some of them have it number one, as, as we do, and some others have it number five or six after maybe you know, China, the US, India. But, but everyone has uh, Brazil in their map because they've seen, uh, on the one hand, the, the potential that the country has. On the other hand, they've seen uh, lots of value creation over the last uh, few years with, with Marco Libre, with Nubank, with Stone, with, with, with Pax Seguro, with Chispe. So clearly, uh, there's a very attractive market. And then the technology uh, market, in particular for investments, uh, has developed first in the US, then in China, Europe, and now more recently in, in Latin America. So there are more global investors than, than local investors. So, so the combination of those two factors explain what, what you were saying. Uh, and why the structuring of a company needs to be global. That's mainly because the, the, there's a format uh, in venture capital that comes from the early days of the Silicon Valley, where uh, you can create the right governance for a company, the right alignment of incentives between investors, founders, employees. Uh, you can set a, a group of rules that will allow you to, to manage uh, the company with that alignment and, and maintain it. So it's a, a set of, of rules, a, a, a governance structure that global investors are very used to. And also is one that has been very successful over time. So why change it, right? Uh, and, and when you look at uh, the local uh, regulations, local legal frameworks that we have in, in Brazil, Mexico, Chile, Colombia, uh, you cannot really recreate that kind of legal framework that made the Silicon Valley so, so successful. So uh, investors want to preserve that. And that's why uh, we also, as investors that invest mainly in Latin America, prefer those structures because we think there's an advantage there. Yeah, that, that's great tip for startups that are looking for uh, receive investments from global investors. Uh, and Anna, do, do you see that this creates uh, additional bureaucracies? Have you seen or listened about stories in, in those startups that receive capital from global investors, the process that they face uh, to get money into Brazil, uh, you know, before actually Hermeso Line existed? Obviously, there's always some friction if you need to have two bank accounts and you have to have two entities, etc. Again, as I was saying earlier, I think net net, it is very positive to have that structure because it allows you to have the right governance, allows you to attract the right investors, etc. But if you go and just zoom in into how it is to manage that, yeah, it has some complexity. So, so you need the help of companies like Remesa to, to help you handle that. It's not much of a problem, but yeah, you need to have two bank accounts in two currencies. So, so you need someone that can help you navigate that as easy as, as possible. Oh, yeah, makes sense. And that's the reason why uh, we created Remesa for startups, uh, to help startups in this process and, and uh, help them to uh, bring money from abroad to Brazil and also to uh, uh, have a dedicated service uh, paying less than the uh, bank or traditional bank services. Uh, Anna, do, would you like to add something else in terms of tips uh, for those entrepreneurs that are looking to start a business? Uh, what would you recommend? Anything that uh, uh, you would suggest for them? We're always very humble when it comes to make a recommendation to 
what other people uh, should do. Uh, but in general, we're big, big believers in the upside that technology is creating in our lives, in our businesses, uh, and we think we're just scratching the surface. Uh, we, we've been already in this last wave of, of, of technology for over 25 years, in first the internet, then the use of internet by users, or by consumers, then obviously more recently mobile internet, now hopefully we're getting into 5G. Uh, I, I think we're, we're really scratching the surface. Obviously, the unfortunate event of COVID also allowed us to see how much value can be created, maintained, et cetera, via, via technology. So, so I'm very bullish there. So if someone is thinking where to start a career, I would certainly uh, direct that person towards technology and the technology industry. Then whether you want to be an entrepreneur or not, that is very related to your first question, Alex, what makes a, a company successful? And it is a, a very convinced entrepreneur with, with a strong vision. So if you have a vision, and um, you can really not let your life go without thinking about that, that vision, you should certainly try to uh, take action on, on that vision and, and build a business around it. Uh, and do not care that much about whether other people think that vision is, is the right one or not, but you do need to care a lot about how do you feel about uh, that uh, vision. If you feel that that vision is the passion of your life, is something you cannot live without, etc., go, go for it. Uh, and I think uh, you have what, what is the most important uh, um, ingredient to be a successful entrepreneur. If you don't, don't do it. Don't do it because it's cool. Don't do it because uh, the Nasdaq is going up. Don't do it because uh, you've seen a friend uh, enjoying what, what he's doing. And th those are very personal decisions and you really need to have a strong personal reason why to do it. But if you do it, uh, if you do have that, that reason, go ahead and do it because I think it's it's, it's uh, worth it. But, but it's a, it's a, a path that has, a, at the end, it's very rewarding. And, and, and even if you don't succeed, I think trying, believing in your dream and acting on it, I think it is, is, is great, but it's a, it's a rough pathway, right? So it's not that everything will be great. There are some sunny days and, and many rainy days. And only those that are really committed to what they are doing and really enjoying trying to make that dream come true, come true are, are the ones that, that can enjoy the ride. Uh, otherwise, you, you'll be uh, basically getting yourself uh, into a very painful process, very frustrating process. Hernan, thank you very much for your time. E muito obrigado por compartilhar a sua experiência com a gente hoje. Thank you so much, Alex. And great to be talking with you. E você aí, continue acompanhando a nossa websérie. Eu te espero no próximo episódio. Até breve. Música